Hello and welcome to beautiful Boise. I'm your host, Jack Bondi. On today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the Green Belt and the parks that lay adjacent to it. Today, joining us is Kevin Chrisman. So thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So uh, why do you choose to cover the Green Belt and all the parks around it? Well, a lot of people, when they think of a park, it's like, oh, just a place to go and have a picnic and uh, just, like, see the scenery. But there's actually so much more that you can do at these parks uh, that I'm going to cover on this show. Okay, so you covered Veterans Memorial, Ann Morrison, Julia Davis, and Lucky Peak, right? Yeah, and those are just only, like, a handful of the things that you can see on the green belt. I know just down from Julia Davis, they have the Anne Frank Memorial, which is a pretty neat thing. It's yeah. dedicated to human rights. They have like the Firefighters Memorial. Uh, Albertson's Park is another one. There's just so many different things to see. Okay, so Veterans Memorial, that's your first stop, right? Yeah, that's the first trip on this uh, okay. journey. So where is it located exactly? Uh, it's located just off state if you're heading from Garden City into Boise. Uh, it's right off of uh, another road called Veterans Memorial, so it's pretty easy to see. Okay, so well, why don't we take a look at this? So it looks like that's definitely an honorable place to be and go. And there were quite a few memorials and like statues, bronze statues, metal statues and all. So what exactly do they have there? Oh, they, I showed it briefly there in that video. They have a thing called the Patriot Walk there. Um, it has a bunch of different memorials to different battles and such. Uh, they have, I believe they have one for Pearl Harbor and uh, they have one there that I showed was for the Korean War. 
And that one's kind of personal to me because I actually had family that was involved with the Korean War. And uh, it just had a lot of different things there, like the wounded, uh, like the wounded soldiers thing, the Purple Heart. They had yeah. that memorial there. And um, they also have something for like POW MIAs. Okay, so you were telling me before about this story that you have on how your parents forced you to take a bike ride. Oh, yeah. I, it was when I was about 15 or so. They woke me up at like 8 in the morning, wheeling my bike um, out into the, the front room there, saying, we're, we're going to go on a trip on the green belt. And, of course, being 15, I was like, ah, I was just rolling in bed. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And they, they took me out there. Um, we parked over there at the park, and uh, we actually took it all the way up uh, to Lucky Peak, which is why I kind of wanted to do my uh, show on this. Was it's because I saw a lot of things back then. I thought it was a lot more interesting um, than I, I thought it would be. Because yeah, you're 15, you just don't want to do well, that. Yeah, when you're 15, you're just pretty much stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you, you don't really appreciate things. Yeah. They get a little bit older. Yeah. So, um, so on your next trek, well, on your journey, you come up next on Ann Morrison Park, right? Yeah, Ann Morrison Park, I believe it's about five miles uh, just down from uh, where Veterans Memorial is at. And it's a pretty scenic uh, trek along the Greenbelt there. And when you get to Ann Morrison, Ann Morrison is just a massive park. Uh, I think it's one of the biggest ones in Boise. Um, yeah. There's just so much to do there. It's like well, um, the video that I got for it, it doesn't quite show everything. Um, but, yeah, there's just a lot of events yeah, that like go on there. a few acres, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's really, just really massive. And it's actually not that far from where BSU is at. Yeah, isn't and it, like, just outside of downtown Boise? Yeah, just a little bit. And it actually have, like, Albertsons Park, like, right across from there. And Albertsons Park is also a pretty scenic uh, area to go visit. I was going to cover it, but of course, only having like a half hour is like you, only so much you can yeah. fit into it. <laughs> so, why don't we take a look at this video that you've taken? So it looks like there's a lot of stuff to do there. Like, I know from being there that there are basketball and softball fields and also soccer. 
Yeah, there are soccer games down there, and also as it didn't show, I don't think it showed in that video that there's exercise equipment too. Yeah, there's an outside uh, gym out there that people can, like if they're going down the green belt, like it's a good place you can just stop, uh, like work your upper body, because a lot of people like doing walking or getting your leg work out yeah. there, but they have it's just so many different events there. They have um, like uh, disc golf out there, like Frolf, that we mentioned in a previous episode of Beautiful Boise. And they have like a full course out there for that. Uh, they do things like cricket, uh, soccer out there. And they even have a lot of big events that go out there. I know uh, Women's Celebration Race it ends there at Ann Morrison Park. And I think they also have like the Gay Pride Parade that shows there. Um, and just a lot of things like that there. They have, I know during uh, Independence Day, the 4th of July. Oh, uh, yeah, the it, fireworks. There. Yeah, That's have, usually like biggest fireworks show yeah they have a really huge fireworks show out there i remember being out there once and just having my phone up and just filming it It was really really awesome to see yeah so you mentioned gay pride parade i mean not to offend anyone but this is idaho i didn't think they would have something like that i know it, it is a little shocking i remember the first time that i actually saw it I was wandering through the park, and I kept saying, what are all these people doing here? Yeah. And then uh, come to find out, yeah, it was the Gay Pride Parade. I mean, it's not really that huge being Idaho. Yeah. But it's still it's still a little surprising to see because you, you think of Idaho as being a pretty conservative state, and then you see things like that. It's like, oh, it's a little more diverse than I thought it'd be. Yeah. I mean, California is probably, like, much bigger there, but... So, Ann Morrison, do you know much more about her? I mean, there's the Morrison Center over at VSU that gets a lot of shows in it, but... Yeah, she was uh, quite a figure around here. Uh, she has a lot of different things named after her, like that thing you just mentioned at VSU, the Ann Morrison Center. She just did a lot of good things for Boise and for uh, the Treasure Valley. Uh, being quite the philanthropist as she was. Uh, but yeah, she, she is just one of the prominent figures around here. Okay, so I guess next we can go to Julia Davis Park, and that's like maybe half a mile from Ann Morrison, isn't it? Yeah, it's really close. It's maybe about, I don't know, about five, ten minute walk away from Ann Morrison Park. And even though Julia Davis is so small, they just have so many events that they just pack into that small park. And it's just right across the river from BSU. It's connected by the Friendship Bridge. And um, it, it's one of my favorite parks. I visit there quite frequently. I know a lot of people like to park there, that go yeah. to BSU, and then just uh, cross over the Friendship Bridge. Yeah, I mean, BSU's parking, awful. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> it's horrible. But that's a whole different thing. So why don't we take a look at what you got of this?
so. I know that there are a lot of things that you can do in there. I mean, from what I know, there's Art in the Park, Gene Harris Jazz Festival, and then there's like the main events. Then there's the, uh, the Boise Art Museum and the zoo, and then also the Rose Gardens around it too, isn't there? Yeah, the Rose Garden, I mean, you couldn't really see it that well in that uh, video because it's out of season, but that gets really beautiful uh, during the spring when everything starts to bloom. And then um, the zoo has quite a few events there. I know just last month they had uh, Boo in the Zoo for the kids. where They get to dress up in costumes. You go see yeah. all the animals there. And uh, I also showed off the Gene Harris uh, band shell there. That's where they have the Gene Harris uh jazz festival that you mentioned it, it's pretty cool it's really it's free for anybody just as long as you can find the parking for it because that the parking there is just it's really limited well, yeah <laughs> always pretty crowded and then well the gene harris jazz festival i don't think i've been there but i'm a big fan of it because the high school bands go there me and me being from capital i'm a huge fan of capital's jazz band Oh, yeah. That and Bora, those are like the two best jazz bands, and they're always something to go listen to. But they're also like the other high school bands that are pretty good too, and definitely something to go to. Yeah, it's always nice to hear uh, that sort of competition that they have. I mean, it's a friendly competition, but. Uh, it's kind of. Kind of. I mean, there's always going to be that rivalry that yeah, you have. Yeah, there's huge rivalries. But it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean,. I think they even have things like um, art in the park there and um, like different food festivals that happen. I think they have like the Greek food festival there. It's one of the, one of the things I want to go to because I really love Greek food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, have you been to like any of these events? Or? Um, I haven't because usually I'm uh, pretty busy. I know that they also have uh, like that man-made lake out there. Okay. I have been on that. Uh, they have a paddle boat that you oh, can yeah. actually get on and paddle out into the in the water. It's really cool uh, doing that. Um, a lot more scenic because you actually go underneath this bridge that actually connects from uh, Julia Davis to the Discovery Center, and you go underneath there, and that's a nice little trip through there with the the trees hanging during the spring. Yeah, I remember doing paddle boating. Uh, I don't know. There seemed to be like geese and ducks that were always around kind oh. of get annoying but well the geese are always annoying the, the geese are everywhere there and sometimes <laughs> you get a little too close they'll like start hissing at you oh well, yeah they're <laughs> pain in the butt really so uh our next next thing we go to it's at the end of the green belt would be lucky peak right yeah it's um quite a bit of ways away from uh boise but uh it's the end of the green belt and it's definitely uh, one of those last but not least situations. It's kind of a nice area to go to. Well, yeah, of all the places, I would say that this is the best to go to. And, well, we can take a look why.
So it looked pretty barren from the time that you were filming this. Yeah, it's uh, obviously in the off season right now since it's getting a lot colder out. Uh, but I sh took pictures there of the lake. They actually have it drained right now, and that was the fountain that was out in the center. During uh, the spring and summer when it starts warming up, it gets really, really busy out there. There's just people everywhere. Well, yeah, I mean, I remember going down there sometimes, swimming in there. Water's pretty cold, especially by the fountain. It's like, Ryan reminds me of having asthma attacks. I mean, it's that cold. Yeah, I actually have an interesting story about that. I was probably about eight years old with my brother, and uh, we were taken out there by my mom, and we were, um, he was wanting to swim out towards the center of that fountain, and the water just shoots out of yeah. there really high. And uh, he, he kept trying to, to take me out. He said, come on, it's not that deep. You can make it. You can make it. And instant I would get underneath that cascading water, it was just coming down so heavily that uh, I, would, I would just start losing breath. I was <gasps> like that, and I'd have to swim back. Yeah. But... What was funny was when I was actually filming that, I saw that they had that lake drain, and I just decided to go up there and then just touch it, just so I could get that part out of my life. <laughs> it's like, there, I finally touched it. I should have had somebody take a picture of it, but it was definitely interesting. Yeah, and then also, when I've been down there before, it was for school field trips and going into the, going into the dam and showing how all the hydroelectric power and all how that works, do they still do that? Yeah, they, they have tours down there uh, still, and they, they have quite a few events there, actually, like the full-size marina that's just not that far away from there. Um, and then you saw those big rooster tails there uh, when they uh, opened the floodgates. Yeah. They actually have uh, like an opening ceremony that they have on TV, so you can go out there and see that, and those things actually get really loud. They're definitely a spectacle to see there. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been down there once when it was going on because it was probably one of the larger ones. But yeah, it seems like maybe 100 feet, 100 feet long, shoots out about 100 feet, maybe 50 feet high or something like that. Yeah, they are really impressive. And I mean, that video just doesn't do it justice. No. But, and, and that's pretty much the main reason of this is to get people to go out there to go see it for themselves. Yeah. So, I mean, how many times have you been down there? Um, this was actually my first time going down there in uh, about four or five years, but it's good to see it. Um, it's definitely a nice place to go out there and look and then see the water. Okay, well, looks like we're out of time, unfortunately. So thanks for joining us on Beautiful Boise, and catch us later.